All right, Sean Ames here from Heart of America FPV, and uh, today I'm starting something new. Here recently on Joshua Bardwell's live streams, he was talking about what he would do if he were starting a YouTube channel today, now, and it would be to like browse all of the groups on Facebook or groups wherever, RC groups or whatever, look for questions and just try to answer them. Obviously, I've had this YouTube channel for a long time. I'm happy with how it does. Like, I don't have any goals for it. His answer was specifically in reference to the question like uh, what's the easiest way to become like a professional youtuber maybe i i don't know I, I don't remember the exact question but it was like what's the easiest way to become a pro at this that's not really my intent either but i was kind of inspired by his idea because i like making stuff but i tend to get super bogged down by like trying to make something super cool i have an idea for a video that's going to be super complex and then i never execute it so i never end up making it his idea though is pretty simple so i'm going to start a bit of a series that might end up living in my wheelhouse a little bit. And that's why I'm excited about doing this, not because I wanted to become any, anything. I think at a certain level, I have some knowledge to share and this stuff is fun for me. We're gonna do a series called Two Minute Tech Support. I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on all the groups on Facebook. If you see a, a question that you think I could answer, maybe tag me in it. But I'm going to uh, first shoot just a video explanation to send to the person that asked a question. And then I'm gonna put an intro and an outro on it and throw it on YouTube as well. So there's, you know, documented space there for it. But yeah, that's the goal to do uh, in two minutes or around two minutes, do a tech support spot answering the question that someone had on Facebook. So at this point, I don't have any thoughts or considerations of like making a Patreon or anything silly like that, but I'm going to keep with my theme of affiliate links. And I'm going to share a link in the description of this video with something interesting that I've bought off of Amazon lately. <laughs> yeah. If you want to check that out, it's a bit of a surprise and, uh, um, obviously, if you buy something from those links, it helps me out. I was checking out the pages and saw someone asking a question about UARTs and RXs and TXs. So I made a quick uh, desk video trying to answer that the best I could. The first question that I have the opportunity to answer for someone I found today on the Rotor Riot community from Robert Weidman. And uh, so I'm going to cut to the video I shot for him. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Hey, Robert, my name is Sean Ames. I saw your post in the Rotor Riot community asking about uh, UARTs and RX slash TX uh, labeling on flight controllers. The answer to your question is yes. If it's labeled RX4, then more than likely that is also UART4. Now, typically each UART has the ability to have both an RX and a TX pad. That's not always the case. Sometimes things are shared. So like there might be an ESC telemetry pad in the plug or I guess pin in the plug, and then there might just be like an RX2 pad. Well, the TX2 might be that ESC telemetry plug. So a lot of times things can be shared and uh, that kind of thing. One thing to keep in mind is if by chance you're using an F4 board, the S-Bus connection has to be on a very specific RX pad. Typically it will be labeled just S-Bus. That becomes less important on F7, H7, or I think even F3 boards. So one thing I wanted to show you um, before I jump off of here, and I want to keep this super brief, let's go ahead and plug this in and pop into beta flight. All right, if you pop into beta flight here and go to CLI, you can type resource, and this is going to list all the different resources on the board and uh, specifically I guess related to your question here these serial TX and serial RX resources I mean, you can look at it this way so obviously resource serial TX1 that would be UART1 and there's both a TX1 and an RX1 so both of those are UART1 what's interesting is this A9 is going to refer to the pad that is labeled TX1 on the board. And there's a ton of videos out there about resource remapping, so if that's something that uh, you're interested in, maybe head out and uh, look for that. Another quick tidbit to keep in mind is that really one type of resource should be put on each UART. You don't want to have smart audio on TX4 and then try to put GPS on RX4. That's not going to work. Or camera control on RX4, smart audio on TX4. Even if you're only using one of the pads, you definitely need to keep those on separate UARTs. But in general, I hope that this is helpful to you about uh, UARTs and RX and TX pads. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's useful to you. So 